First of all, we must understand that East Asia is not only regional, but global in concept and reality. East Asia has the world's largest economies next to the U.S., over 20% of the world's population, I believe, and some of the world's oldest and richest cultural traditions. And today, East Asia is the hub of global trade and cultural exchange, the pivot of U.S. diplomacy, and the epicenter of industrial, environmental, and demographic transformations with global repercussions. So unquestionably, the study of East Asia is crucial. East Asia is one of the most vital regions for understanding the contemporary world. When people thought about East Asian studies before, the assumption was we were going to study sort of traditional East Asia. It's history and, and culture and religion and, uh, and this, and language, certainly. And, and that's still very much the core of East Asian studies. But if you ask, what is the connection with East Asia intellectually or in scholarship, then that expands enormously beyond the core focus of East Asian studies per se. The scope of interest in East Asia now spans virtually the entire spectrum of academic interests. Its most important function is the interaction of the disciplines. It's important that students are able to cross breed in a sense, to go into other areas as well. Students who stick too closely to within one discipline really don't do as good work in their research. And so the center is the place to meet and to interact and to find out what's going on elsewhere. It is absolutely crucial for Stanford to foster deeper understanding and engagement with the world by exposing our students to different people, cultures, and languages from a variety of disciplinary perspectives. And this is precisely the core mission of CIS as an area studies program. China is changing. Japan's still wrestling with its demographic and economic dilemmas. The Korean Peninsula, the integration of the region. The importance of Asia is obvious. If it's not obvious to you, you got a problem. It's a region of superlatives. The most people, biggest economies, biggest militaries, most nuclear weapon states, largest military budgets, largest trade, largest foreign exchange, holdings, largest economic trade relationship with the United States. It would be inexcusable to pretend that it's anything less than as important as it is. What excites me is when we as scholars and researchers actually engage in collaborative work, certainly in systematic discussion, but also in sharing of information, building institutional ties. I think that really deepens understanding significantly and leads to a much richer outcome of a scholarly pursuit. People are working in nanotechnology, they're working in bioengineering, they're working in synthetic biology, water studies, environmental studies. There's not a problem we're studying on this campus that doesn't exist in Asia. And for many of them, either Asia or particular countries in Asia, are a part of the problem and they've got to be a part of the solution. In short, to study East Asia means to understand the world or to understand its interconnectedness to the global economy and culture.